Hi, welcome to Talk Straight Bible. We're your hosts today. I'm Jeremiah. And I'm Rafina Antonetti. And we are here just sharing the Word of God today. We've been talking about vessels of mercy. Well, we know what vessels are, right? Yes. And we know what the mercy of God is, you know? Yes. It's compassion, it's pity. Um, Someone put it another way, it's it's something that God gives us that we don't deserve. Hmm. You know, and um, it's like sometimes with our children. Sometimes we give them things they don't deserve, but we do it because we love them and we hope for the best. Well, we're talking about vessels of mercy and we're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. And we're relaxing here. We're just enjoying the presence of God and uh, we're enjoying you as we're here. And so uh, my wife is over here trying to turn (laughs) off something in her (laughs) iPad. That's how we relax we are here. So... We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, oh, verse Lord, 7, it's because we're loaded. We are, we are <laughs> tech people. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. You know, one of the, one of the things that I've learned is that we have to be humble and understand that the power, everything that, that flows through us, everything that happens through us, it's for God's power. No matter what goes on in our life, it's always to show that God is in control Amen. and that we can't exist without him. You know, he tells the rubble bell, one of his vessels, the governor of Judah, mm-hmm. when they came back from the exile to build the temple, he was concerned. He was afraid. He saw an army surrounding and he was afraid. So he, he encamped an army. And that's a good thing. You have to do that. But I love what the message that God gave the prophet to go and tell Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, he said, tell Zerubbabel, not by might, (laughs) not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. Wow. You know, the vessel was shaken, but he said, listen, don't be shaken. You're not going to break. I got you. Amen. You know, I was looking at this verse of scripture this morning and I, I kind of like I was going through through the um, slides and I and I saw the scripture. I was looking at the scripture and I kind of stopped on my tracks because um, I've seen the scripture before. But I wonder if we've ever asked or ever wondered, what is this treasure that is in earthly vessels? <laughs> what what exactly is this treasure in earthly vessels? Mm. And then I came to, um, and I was looking it up, and it says that the word there is thesauros, thesauros. <laughs> and it means a deposit, something that is wealth, mm-hmm, something mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. is valuable, mm-hmm. right? Um, something precious, something good. All right. And 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 now we have what is it that we have as Christians that is that valuable and that good? But the word of God. That's right. But the word of God and that God would put it in an earthen vessel. And when I looked at this, it said an earthenware or earthen vessel is something that could even be frail. All right. And we know that when when. Um, the potter is making pottery, those vessels can easily be broken. If That's it right. falls, it shatters. That's all right? Tender, and, and, tenderness. And, and when you think about that, you know, that God would use us, something that's frail, mm. to hold his word. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That we're vessels that holds God's word. We hold, God, we hold eternity within us. That's right. And that scripture, that scripture right there, um, just just came alive to me this morning. Mm. That's excellent. That's beautiful. And you know, we God wants us to trust Him. God wants us to trust Him. You know, and when we trust Him, we can see His hand moving in us, and He's shaping us. You know, although we're, we're clay vessels, we're, we're shaped like you said. We're holding eternity inside of us, and only God can do that. You know, wow. I, I, I want to ask Jesus a question when I get up there. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to know, but I just want to hear his eternal answer. Mm. <laughs> mm. Since we're going to be learning still there, you know, someone said, we're going to know everything. I said, you're not going to know everything. You're going to you're going to be like Christ. 
resurrected and you're going to know him and be like him, but he's God. Amen. But I'm going to ask him a question. I'm going to say, how did you hold all that power and anointing in, in your vessel? Mm. <laughs> so, you know, it's eternal, his power. Yeah. How did you do it? But he gave us another gift. You talked about the gift of the word of God. Mm-hmm. But Luke says, and Matthew also says, mm-hmm. ask and it will be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. And um, Luke said, "If if uh, how much more will he give you the Holy Spirit? Matthew says, you know, if you seek, you will find. If you knock, the door will be open. You know, if you ask, it will be given. But Luke puts it, because being a doctor, Luke was a doctor and a historian. Mm-hmm. He was always focused on Christ and the body. Just like a policeman talks about police things and they're associated, you know, with the gospel. We know we've seen that. And most likely, I mean, a fighter talks about fighting, you know, et cetera. Uh, we want to be holistic in the gospel, of course. But he gave us the gift of the Spirit of God. That's a gift. And that is the most precious gift in wow. the earthen vessel. Amen. Everything else comes with that. Amen. But that is the gift. And Peter, in his preaching, at the day of Pentecost, or on the day of Pentecost, after his preaching, some men came up to him. People came to him. And, and they, the Bible says they were pricked to the heart. And they asked, what shall we do? What can we do to be saved, you know? And he said, repent and the gift, be baptized, and the gift of the Holy Spirit will be given to you, the gift. So the most precious thing that we have in our earthen vessels is the gift. And you're right, the earthen vessel is very fragile. Eternity. Now, you know, I want to talk about something real quick in in Joel, because Joel Joel says, let the weak say, I am strong. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we, we sing that song, right? Right. Give thanks. Give thanks. But this part here in Joel 3.10, actually the whole scripture is, you know, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. In other words, there's warfare going to go on, right? Beat your plowsheds into swords. Later on, after the, it's all over, he says, you know, take your swords and, and melt them down and make plows, you know. But here... There's battle going on. Then he says, let the weak say I am strong. And so sometimes as vessels, we because we're frail, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if, if I'm able to achieve what God is calling me to, to do. But we have to trust that he, he's put the right thing in the vessel. And that's the Holy Spirit. We can trust the Holy Spirit. Remember, he speaks. Mm-hmm. He guides. Mm-hmm. He teaches. And he reveals. Very important to understand those things. Because Jesus said, I'm going away. I'm not going to leave you vessels empty. Right. I'm not going to leave you like orphans. He says, I'm going to send the paracletos. He will be by your side. He will be inside of you. And so we don't have to fear. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be continuing now with the potter's house oh. in Jeremiah 18, 1 through 6. So what we just discussed was a little side notes there. little because, side notes. Very uh, important. Sometimes when you look at things, God just puts something in your heart that you just need to share on. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's just go ahead and read the verse of Scripture. It says, and the word which came to Jeremiah, I love that because, you know, the, you know, the word came to Jeremiah. People say, you know, how do you know the Lord? He says, because the word will come to you. Amen. He was a vessel. He was, he was a prophet, called to be a prophet, sanctified to be a prophet, ordained to the nations. And so we can trust that God has chosen you as a vessel and the word of the Lord will come to you for you to act. And he says, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, not from outside sources, right. from the inside source. Right. Well, he's in the vessel, right? Saying, arise and go down. I like that. You know, arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will cause you to hear my voice. You know, We talked about clay is a natural product dug from the earth. And God knows where the clay that he wants to shape is. Mm -hmm. He knows where the clay is. You know, he knew that there was a clay that was marred. We talked about, remember, remember that the Bible says that when he went to the potter's house, he saw the potter working. You know, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. remember what Jesus said? He said, 
even now I am working, even as my father is working. Mm -hmm. But he went to the potter's house and he saw the potter working on a piece of clay that was marred. And we know that that word marred means corruption, mm -hmm. perversed. <laughs> That's the hard one. It was, uh, it, was, it was broken. It was no good. And you can see as he's spinning the wheel, you can understand how it was breaking in his hands. How it was breaking in his hands. And so he must have stopped the wheel, removed the marred parts, removed those things that were imperfect, and then in doing so, you take clay out of it and you there's always clay left on the marred. Did you know that? Yeah. You, you know, there's always things left, but he took what was left. And always on the side. Yeah. Yeah. He took what was left mm -hmm. and he shaped it into another vessel. It says as he saw as he saw fit. As he saw and, fit. And I, I love that because you know what? God took away so many things from my life. Mm -hmm. So many pieces that I said, I need that. I need this. No, you don't need that. Wow. Yeah. You don't need that. I'm putting it to the side right now. You don't need that. Yeah. You don't need this person in your life. You don't need this thing in your life. You don't need to be here. You need to be there. And, you know, one of the things that I, I appreciate God so much, yeah, I appreciate God uh, so much more because, you know, clay can be molded by the hand or with the help of a wheel. We went by this yesterday, and I want you to check out this picture because it's beautiful. And I want to just give a personal testimony for me. I was um, I was living in the Bronx in a little depressed place, and I got, you know, the Lord came to me there. And then I lost that place because I couldn't hold it. And I wound up moving with a, a brother from the church, and it was interesting. You know, he was going through some serious stuff, and when I moved into the apartment, it was dark. So I said, let's paint this place up. Let's, have, let's make it happen. So we painted it and everything. It, it really looked much brighter. I had my room. He had his room. And in that room, I spent three years, well, excuse me, 15 months, 15 months just studying and studying and studying, going to work, studying, going to church, studying back and forth. Then, you know, through these lips of clay, because he had lost his children, I had given him a word, a prophetic word that God was going to restore his children. Well, God restored his children and I had to move out. <laughs> well, and moving out, I moved to another place, a little tinier room. It was even smaller than that. It was, it was hard times, but God was sanctifying me and, and molding me for something so much more important. Yep. And I was, I was there, and I don't know how I did it except by the grace of God because, again, I was growing. And being in that little room, I had one little bed. Uh, it was two little beds together. And... Uh, I don't know how, someone gave me a piano, I put it in there, so I'm playing piano, I'm watching, you know, people preach, and I'm, I'm there for a while, and I said, God, when are you going to set me free and give me, you know, and just wait, just wait, and God was breaking and taking things out of me, and in that, in that situation is where I met you. Oh, that was nice. I met you, <laughs> and then we got married, and we went on to ministry, and here we are, 31 years later, yep. and I know you more than that because I knew you a little bit before yeah. we got married, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and we and we kept it clean. Thank you, Lord, that we <laughs> you want to make sure that <laughs> we, we kept the vessels clean, okay? But we said, we better get married. Let's get married and because we were, we were doing ministry together, and we were not even married yet. But Amen. we did, and we got married, and then we, we went through our own shaping. Mm-hmm. You know, as a couple, you're going to get shaped. But you know what? Let the weak say, I am strong. Amen. Let the weak say, I am strong. So I just want to give you that testimony this morning on how God uses all things around us to become the vessel he desires. Amen. 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 Everything. I'm, I'm saying, God, it was so hard. But I thank God today that I have stability, that... I'm an earthen vessel, weak, but filled with the power of God. Amen. And, and you know, how many times, how many times have we asked the question, mm. what are you doing <laughs> we, with me? Yeah, we asked that question yesterday. Why <laughs> are you doing it this way? <laughs> Do I really need to go through this? Mm. And you know what? Sometimes God doesn't just give us the answer right away. That's right. But know that because you're being molded and shaped in his hands, he has a plan and a purpose of why he's doing that. 
why um, why you're going through it, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So um, it's it's just an amazing thing that God is doing in our lives. Well, you know what? Jeremiah had to go to a physical part of his house to get a spiritual message. Mm. Amen. That's important because God uses the natural things around us to speak to us, right? Doesn't he use the natural things to speak to us? Yes, he does. Well, what about this? I mean, he goes to a physical place to give us a spiritual message. Now, this is the most important part. As God is speaking to us, he's also preparing us for things that are ahead. Mm. But we have to be careful that we do not move to the left nor to the right. On this our is, own. That's right. There's mm-hmm. a scripture. There's a scripture in Jeremiah 2.13 that I've always hold, held dear. And it's very, very serious. It says here, for my people have committed two evils. Two. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, mm. and have cut out for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Mm. Now, I remember the story of a young boy that went fishing with his father. And they came back with fish, and they were alive. Kept them in a bucket or something. And so the son wanted to put them in the cistern that they had was a farm. And the father says, son, you can't put those fishes in there. They won't, it won't work. But the, the son kept, you know, the little boy kept insisting. And so the father wanted to teach him a lesson. So they filled, they filled the system with water. He put the fish in there, and they were swimming, and the boy was really happy, you know. And uh, that night he goes to sleep. He wakes up, and he comes back, and the fish are dead. Right. And he goes, dad, dad, the fish are dead. He says, son, I told you. The cistern is cracked. You can't put anything in it. It's no good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. and the boy never forgot that lesson. Mm -hmm. Well, our obedience to God heals us from those cracks Mm. that do not allow us, that does not allow us to hold the things that God gives us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And we know that um, also that clay conform, we are clay conformed to the image of God and of his son. And you know, um, yesterday you mentioned something that was really, really interesting about when the potter, the potter is, is molding the vessel when the potter's that he's using a wheel and that wheel you said was the and, word and was Ben. Ben, son. Which means son. And house. That's son, right. S-O-N, right? That's right, Son, yes. S-O-N. Right. And so how you made that comparison about God, um, the the son, how God gave us to us, the son yes. and put us in his hand. That's correct. And that's when, um, you know, that's when I showed this picture, which was like amazing to me. Hold on. I'm getting it. I'm getting it which was amazing to me that you have mentioned that because of the fact that um, that's that's how God does. That's what God does, you know. <laughs> he He shapes us even before we're born. He's molding us. He's, he's holding us together, you know, in our mother's womb, and he's shaping us. And, and that's just so incredible to me mm. that he does that, Yeah, you know. And... Um, I just wanted to mention that again because that was pretty awesome. That's awesome. That was pretty awesome. Why don't you read the next scripture there? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hath not the potter power (laughs) over the clay? Oh, God. Oh, wait. Let me just stop there for a second. (laughs) The question is, does the potter not have have the pot? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? And you may say, wait a minute, you make he makes vessels of dishonor? Yeah, just ask Pharaoh. He, he created all of us. <laughs> he, he created all of us. But what did, what did, when you go, when you continue to read chapter 9 of Romans, you're going to see how Paul talks about Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. He says, "I'll have God said, I'll have mercy and whom I want to have mercy on. He said, you know, God made Pharaoh to show his power. Mm-hmm. 
you know, it's funny because you, you, you put that scripture, right? But we're talking about Jeremiah, and, and as we read, we, we continue to read in that passage of scripture, uh, chapter 18, it says, it says, don't I have the right to do with you people? I don't know. Do we have that scripture up there? Or are we going to be reading that again? Yes, sir, so we'll read ahead. it again. But that this came to mind. Don't I have the right to do with you people of Israel what the potter did with the clay? You are in the hands. You are in my hands just like the clay is in the potter's hand. If at any time I say that I am going to uproot, break down, or destroy any nation or kingdom, wow. but then that nation turns from its evil, mm-hmm. I will do what I said I would. Yes. On the other hand, if I say that I'm going to plant or build up any nation or kingdom, but then that nation disobeys me and does evil, I will not do what I said I would. Well, you know what? Okay, so that goes perfectly with this verse of scripture that you just pulled up. Absolutely. And I'm going to read a little bit before that verse of scripture. You can see it says, For the scripture says unto Pharaoh, even from this same purpose, have I raised you up that I may show my power wow. in you and wow. that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore, have he mercy on whom he will have mercy and on whom he will hearten. <laughs> and that's what he did. This, Didn't he do that with this, Moses? He told Moses, he said, I'm going to send you there, <laughs> but I'm going to harden his heart. Well, 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 talk about encouragement, right? Right. I'm going to harden his heart. But there was a plan. There was all these plagues that came upon that came upon the land mm-hmm. that he showed his power that's, through. That's right. And a, a weak man like Moses. Amen. A weak man like Moses. Because he made went, he, every excuse, right? He, hey, he went from being a, a prince in Egypt. To, I can't talk. To, to I can't talk. What and, am I and, say? And, and, and come back, listen to this one. <laughs> Folks, <laughs> listen to this. I mean, God, God he, he, he really just makes me laugh sometimes I say he takes Moses and he sends him down to Egypt watch this he he ran he ran out of Egypt he was in Egypt all the horses all the chariots I mean the power of Egypt was tremendous he comes back with a stick mm-hmm. that's right <laughs> he comes back with a stick that's right full of God's power amen what do you have in your hand Moses a stick mm-hmm I've been having it for about forty years out here. He says, "Yeah, well, I've been, I've been, I've been shaping and molding you, mm-hmm. and you're the, you're the chosen vessel." Which just goes to show that you could be all high and mighty before you come to God, but once you have a taste of who He is, you have no choice but to humble yourself. Don't don't don't. Play he with will God. show you. He will show you just what's inside of you. Don't really. play with God because He knows what He's doing. Now, I'm going to read this just a little further. And it says this, I love this. Again, he says, so then he has mercy on whom he wants, and he heartens who he wants. And he says, but you will say to me, then why does he still find fault with us? After all, who can resist his will? Well, you talked about, but he said, in other words, if you make Pharaoh or you made me, why are you going to? Why are you going to um, find fault with me when you made me the way I am? God didn't make us the way we are. Mm. He made us to be holy. Mm-hmm. We are the way we are because we're fallen. Mm-hmm. Now watch this now. But you mentioned a lot, shaped in iniquity. Shaped in iniquity. Right? So we, we, We're already, listen, when we came out of our fathers, we already came out sinners. But we grew up. Mm-hmm. We were raised up in iniquity. That means... The iniquity means pervertedly twisted. Mm. You know, it's like taking a, a piece of metal and, and heating and twisting it, and then when you cool it down, it stays in that in that shape right. or plastic, you know, right. or you know, uh, something to that effect. Then he says, "This, who are you, a mere human being, to talk back to God?" <laughs> he says, "Well, what is for? Listen, well, what is form say to the one who formed it? Why did you make me this way?" Mm. Now watch this. Oh, or excuse me, or has the power um, no right to make, you know, from a lunk of clay, the potter to do what he wants to do, an honorable vessel or dishonorable vessel? Who are we to say, God, what are you doing? I, I heard a long time ago, I read a long time ago in a Christian book, never left me. You know, certain things don't leave you. And I remember it said, you know, you can't try to be a Christian. You have to die to be a Christian. Amen. And you don't have to ask God why. If we trust him, we just say, Lord, your will be done. I mean, Jesus, when he was in the garden, he said, Lord, I know that you have the power to change this if you want to. You know, 
But what was the whole purpose of it? That God wanted to show us to submit to him, even Amen. as Christ did, a man who had no sin. He's, he was submitted to his father. Wow. An unbroken vessel to teach us that when God heals us and he makes us whole, we can submit ourselves to him. We're going to continue this tomorrow, God willing. And uh, I hope that you are just enjoying our talk, our talk. This is Amen. Talk Straight Bible, and, and we're here because we love you. That's why we're doing this, because we love giving God's truth to the people. Amen. And we, and we really need to talk more and more about God because, you know what, we're getting consumed with talking about too much other stuff, <laughs> too, too, too much stuff that's going on in the world and the nation. And listen, God's word is the only thing, mm. the only thing mm, mm. that's going to stand, the wow. only thing, wow. the only thing that's going to stand in this world and outside this world and underneath this world <laughs> is God's word. God's holy word. Wow. Father, in Jesus' name, we yes, thank Lord. you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for using each and every one of us, yes, Lord, Lord God. Yes. Because we all have a part in this kingdom, Lord God. And one can't do anything without the other. So we're just giving you honor, we're giving you glory, and we're just giving you praise this morning because you are good and you are merciful. We give you Amen. we give you thanks today in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And Father, we also want to thank you that you are not just the potter, but you've been shaping us and molding us all our lives to be who we are today. Help us, oh God to walk in the purposes that you have weaved out for us. Wow. Weaved out for Thank us. Thank you, Jesus. So that we might serve you wholeheartedly in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a blessed day. You too. Amen.